So I'm Catherine Ambrose. My husband Randy and I are longtime realtors. Our daughter Jillian is a realtor with us. We're Ambrose team. And we saw a need for seniors to have more information and have more questions answered and addressed than what we could typically provide on an, a home consult or a listing appointment. And we understood that the process of exiting the real estate market, selling your last home, making a huge transitional move, figuring out what you're going to keep and what to do with the rest of it is huge. And there's a lot of moving parts. We also recognized that there's a lot to do with Medicare and different benefits and where are you going to go so much and we wanted the answers. So we started the seminars so that we could learn right along beside you from experts in the community. So this ends our fourth year today on the seminar series. We'll pick up again in February. We'll do February through December next year as well. And um, I've really enjoyed this journey. I've, I've received a lot of great education. I have great coaches and mentors. And we are learning right alongside everyone else and making great friends in the community. So um, we became a nonprofit um, summer before this last one. And so that's a whole entire thing I didn't expect to do, and it's a lot of fun. And I'm really thankful to all the people and all the education partners that help us put this on. All right, next slide. So what our nonprofit does, we do in-home consults to talk to seniors about any issues there might be, any questions there might be. We do senior living guidance, downsizing support. We manage senior moves. We do our community education. And we do a public television show called Empowering Seniors on PBS Kansas. Now we have a sister show with Mindy East as host. Mindy, if you'll stand up. Our sister show is called Ageless Enthusiasm. And it's really targeting, let's say, like baby boomers and Gen X that are the sandwich generation that are trying to figure out their own aging issues. They might be helping guide elder family members. And um, they might have a lot of challenges to address and so that's what Mindy does and covers a lot of fun topics. And then my husband and I, we do real estate. Um, we have a free moving truck for our sellers to use. And we'd be happy to talk to you anytime. You can always reach me on our main number. OK, next slide. We um, have Downsizers Club going on. It's a smaller group setting where we meet once a month to talk about a downsizing plan, whether someone wants to downsize right away or they just want to plan for the future. And it meets the first Tuesday of every month at PBS on the east side of town. OK, next slide. These are education sponsors. These are all the companies that are supporting us right now. You can see KMH was one of them. And um, we just have some really great companies represented here today. And the next slide shows us the companies that are sponsoring the seminar specifically. And the next slide shows the companies that are sponsoring the television show. And please give them a, a round of thanks. All right, next slide. All right, so let's get started with our topic. We're going to bring the um, education partners or the experts up here right away, and we'll just dive in. Come on up. So we have Hannah Anderson, Brian Spear, GW Ayers. Jillian, we're going to need one more chair. Um, and our two ladies from Blue Stem Communities, Kelly and Bethany, come on up. If, yeah, if one of you could stand for just a minute, we'll get you, get you another chair. Oh, G, GW is going to stand. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to need another one. And what is your name? Thank you so much. Delane, come on up here. And Delane, did you have some remarks to start off with? Always have remarks. That's the kind of person we like. So Delane, tell us what you do. I'm a family practice doctor by training. I have a life coaching business where I help women with type 2 diabetes reverse that. I work in hospice. I work in the ERs. I work at Wichita State. That never happens. Okay, so. um, ooh, there we are. Um, I'm a family practice doc by training. I work um, in a variety of different 
capacities as a physician, but I also am a, I work as a coach where I help women reverse their type 2 diabetes. I work in hospice, I work at Wichita State's Health uh, Services, I work at ERs throughout the um, community, so I do a number of different things. But in my business, it's really about helping people learn to not eat food that makes them sick in order to manage all of their emotions and the stressors and all that comes with it. And the holidays is all about that. Very good. All right, I'm sorry that I goofed that up and we just forgot the physician is all. <laughs> we so. make this all right. <laughs> okay, and we may have to turn that on. So we'll pass the mic around. So we have three mics to work on. If you could just get them on and test them and keep one in your hand for questions. So eating things during the holidays, that can add to things that make us maybe grumpy or not feeling good. Like could January badness. January results that aren't great. Yeah. yeah. I think I can relate to that. <laughs> Hannah Anderson, tell us a little bit about your background. All right. Hi, I've been here before, so it's nice to see some familiar faces. My name is Hannah Anderson. My background is in the skilled nursing world, so the rehab environment, the place nobody wants to spend their holidays, but sadly, sometimes we do. Um, so I have a graduate degree in healthcare leadership, have worked in the healthcare community of Wichita for many, many years with an emphasis on senior care. So I'm happy to be here today, and I hope you guys are all ramping up for a lovely holiday season. Very good. So one of the reasons I wanted Hannah to be here is because of your experience with kind of emergencies with rehab, and there's a lot that goes on in thinking about where you may want to go for rehab and what kind of questions to ask. Okay, Bethany. Hi everyone, my name is Bethany Schrag. I'm from Blue Stem Communities and we have a couple different campuses, but I'm from the Showalter Villa campus and I work with a specific program we have that helps seniors um, remain in independent living longer with additional services and amenities. So. Um, a lot of my work is uh, helping people get to know the services that we have and open themselves up to allowing help and working with families, especially on helping them know how to best care for their loved one. Okay, very good. So independent living. Mm -hmm. So let's go over some of the terminology. So we would say that the people in this room are active adults. And in past seminars, we've referred to ourselves as go, go seniors, on the go. And then the next step might be a little more slow go, where making different choices, like, well, I used to go to that all the time, and now I'm gonna pick and choose what I'm gonna go to. Or I'm gonna go to the graduation ceremony, but not the party. Or I'm gonna skip the ceremony and just go to the party. And just going a little more slow go, and eventually maybe no go, where pretty much not going anywhere. And so, again, we're active adults here, and active adults may stay and age in place, live in their own home, or select another home that makes sense for them, or go to age-qualified housing, which could be rentals. Um, there's apartment complexes, there's patio homes in different areas where everyone is maybe over the age of 55 or the, over the age of 62. Next step is independent living. Can you t tell us what independent living means to you? Mm -hmm. on, um, on, on our campuses, at least, independent living is thriving um, older adults that some of them even still work full time. We've had older adults living um, there and still have regular jobs. They're volunteering, they're going to things. This is the go-go um, phase and may, may transition to a slow-go phase, using that terminology. But um, independent living just provides that support with maintenance, um, some more connections with people, takes a lot of the, um, the unknowns of home ownership off the table. So you know where your finances are at, um, you're in, you're part of a community that then can um, help support you as needs change and um, there's a lot more connections with other people who are going through similar things. So. Okay. And then mm -hmm. Kelly. Hi, I am Kelly Huxman and I'm the second half of the Go 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 crew. Uh, I work in independent living in Heston on our Showalter campus for Bluestone Communities. 
Uh, I have lots and lots of residents that are go, go, goers. Um, and we try and have lots of activities to help you keep going. Uh, so uh, we, um, we do a lot of work with those that are active and thriving at home, but we also, um, we help you and your families uh, work together and learn to work together uh, when it's time to think about maybe slowing down a little bit in the right, uh, the right care settings when you need a little extra help. But. Okay. And GW Ayers with Rainier Firearms Academy, which I think is kind of a treat to talk about safety in our own personal homes and in general when we're out shopping and everything. Well, let's, not, let's let them uh, make a decision whether it's a treat or not. <laughs> so uh, this is my second time presenting. I'm kind of shocked that I'm back here. Um, however, um, my background is I was a soldier for a long time. And then I, I stepped into the firearms industry a few years ago. And uh, I was invited to come to this fine community, open up a store off of Greenwich. And we have a range and a 28,000 square foot facility. Uh, but my mission here today is not to be um, uh, uh, get you to come in the door and buy a gun, which would be cool, right, <laughs> if you did that. Uh, however, uh, my mission here today is to talk about how we make Wichita safer through mindset, training, and equipment. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about holiday-specific safety. Okay, very good. And Brian Spear, he's a member on the board of directors with Empowered Senior and works for Angels Care Home Health. And they let him take time off to help seniors find housing. Yeah, uh, I work with Angels Care Home Health, as Catherine said, and uh, they were very gracious to when uh, KMH had that announcement, I was able to jump in and spend a little bit of extra time uh, helping some seniors and doing health assessments and trying to find the right location. In fact, some of our educational sponsors here, uh, Cedric Plaza I know, and I think Blue Stem Communities even maybe uh, participated a little bit with that. And so we were able to reach out and get, uh, get these people placed very quickly. Uh, my background, I've been in the insurance world for years. Uh, I jumped into senior care about a decade ago, uh, and I've been in home health hospice and private duty in home care um, over those 10 years. Thank you. So we really miss Randy Ambrose today because he wasn't here to load the chairs, so Miss Jillian had to do it. And we did not think to stabilize the chairs, so we're really lucky we didn't need physician services. So, <laughs> so far, so good. Sit carefully, everybody. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, let's please welcome our panel, and thank you so much for being here. All right, let's get started with some questions. So if you have a question, raise your hand. We're gonna have someone come to you with the mic. I'll get us kind of warmed up until we're ready for some questions. So tell us um, what you see during the holidays um, with patients that come in, maybe even with your own family or people that you know. What are some, what's some of your best advice for holiday stress? And why are life-changing decisions and revelations a part of the holidays? I love this question, thank you so much. By the way, I don't smoke cigarettes. I am two weeks off of a cold and it has hit my voice and so who knows what's gonna happen there. I've got a cup of coffee to help with that. But I love this question because what I see, you know, in the variety of um, areas that I work with my clients, I see them overwhelmed and they wanna check out. They wanna stop doing the things that take care of themselves. They feel like they have too many things on their plate, they get overwhelmed with commitments, and then they don't give themselves time to be humans. They don't give themselves time to do the things biologically, taking care of ourselves physically, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, those kinds of things that we need to do as physical human beings, and they don't give themselves time to experience the emotions, good and bad, in the holidays. They expect it all to be pushed under, and then they can't figure out why they ate an entire apple pie at Christmas dinner. They can't figure out why they feel so horrible, why their blood sugars are so awful, and why life is falling apart come January 5th, right, when everything kind of settles down. And so, and I see this even in the hospital, in the ERs where I work, you know, you get people who are rushing around or weren't getting enough sleep or 
oh, I'm only gonna lay down for six hours, so I need to take a sleeping pill, so I absolutely maximize my sleep. And then they get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and they trip, and they fall, and they break this or break that, and then nobody's around. It's all of this not giving yourself time to be a human being. You have requirements, they are not optional. Give yourself the opportunity to be a human. And a lot of times this looks like setting aside more time for you. I think that's the biggest thing. Setting aside time to feel sad, because for me, my grandmother isn't at Christmas, and that still makes me sad 23 years later. But it does, that doesn't go away. Setting aside time to get the rest that you need, so you're not rushing around everywhere, and you don't fall and hurt yourself, those sorts of things. Um, that is the biggest thing that I see. Also, as far as the revelations go, it is in that space of giving yourself time to be a human being and to experience all of the emotions that you get the opportunity to be revealed what it is that you want to do different maybe in the next year or what you want to be different about your life. So I think that that's a huge aspect. Give yourself time to be a human being. Allow all of the good and all of the bad of being a human and allow yourself to process that. I hope that answers that question. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that really kind of summed up what we wanted to, to talk about today, in addition to just individual tips. But that's really what it's all about, is that holidays are time. If you would think about your ahas, what are you learning from this? What are points that you might want to make? Because if you make them to everyone, it might help somebody else. So I got take time and that it's okay to feel those emotions, allow time to feel sad, allow time to get rest. And when you're rushing around, that's when something really even worse can happen, uh, breaking a bone, twisting an ankle, and that just is going to compound everything, the stresses. And so what can we do to manage the stress to make life a little bit easier? So hopefully we'll be talking about that as a group. So Hannah, what are, what are your thoughts on this same question? Hold it way up to your lips, everybody. I forgot to tell you that. So I would really suggest the holidays are a time where we really stress ourselves out trying to do everything that we think we're supposed to do. We've got to put the tree up. We've got to put the ornaments up. We've got to make everything perfect. We've got to make the meal. We've got to clean the kitchen. It's got to look like a Hallmark video. It's not going to. And when you slow it down, like Delane said, and just focus on the things that are truly important and the best pieces about the holiday, it's not having a spotless house. It's not having the perfect Christmas tree. It's the people that are around you and just being there and absorbing that. And if you can slow down and focus on the things that are truly most important, your holidays will be beautiful and magical and nobody's going to care about the messy kitchen. And in slowing down as well, especially with the weather changing, we're getting right into the season where a lot of people that are over the age of 65 wind up in the acute care setting because they slip and fall on the ice. And that is a life-changing situation for yourself if this happens to you as well as your family. And it's amplified in how terrible it is if it happens around the holidays because then nothing can go as planned and your kitchen will not be spotless and the meal won't be perfect. So make sure you take care, especially if it's icy and you have to go somewhere. I'm sure you guys have all heard the, the advice to walk like a penguin. So what that means is quite literally walk like a penguin. So make sure that your arms are out so you have greater balance and you're taking care to look where you're going and walk as carefully and as slowly as possible so that you can get from point A to point B without falling. Um, that, that would be my advice to you. Do what you can. If it's gross outside, don't go outside. The chores can wait. There's Amazon. It's fabulous. Amazon is fabulous. So you can order anything to your house. It's so awesome. I have never heard walk like a penguin. Oh, yeah, let's have a demo. You want to have your arms out because you're going to have greater stability, and you want to look where you're going and take very careful steps. Put your whole foot 
on the grounds. And if you can walk in a space that you have more traction, that's even better. But if it's gross outside, don't go outside. Just wait. Call your kids. They want to help you. So during one of my trainings that I went through, I heard a concept of future self and that sometimes when we're older, we might not envision our future self ending up in acute care and then rehab and then with something life-changing uh, when it comes to a decision that's made to go out on the ice or climb up in the attic and get up, stand on the countertop to decorate up <laughs> above the kitchen cabinets. So a lot of times it's like, well, I've always done that or I know I can do it because it's that independent streak and being autonomous and being in charge of my own life and that can do, get her done attitude um, without the thought of what happens if I fall and does that, is that gonna change my entire plan for aging in my own home as an example or take me from independent living to assisted living. And so we really wanna start thinking about protecting our, our bodies, so, okay. Uh, the first thing I think of is focusing on passing on tradition rather than holding it tight to yourself. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, seniors I know that they always make these certain dishes, uh, just right along the theme of what these ladies have talked about of trying to do everything and do it the way it's always been done. And I would encourage folks to um, think about who they can teach to who in your family can you pass on that special recipe to make an appointment to do that teaching and work on it together for a few years. And then if there's a point when it's too much for you, then it's still living. And that's um, part of that legacy that you can leave and make sure it's passed on rather than holding tight to that. And then if something happens to you, those secrets and that special touch is, is, is lost. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I would say. The other thing is um, to carve out time to just talk, um, to make sure you reserve enough energy and some time, and it might have to be a different night than the big gathering, but just making sure that you have time when you're not focused on dinner, your family's not focused on dinner, everybody has a drink in their hand, and you can just sit down and just talk. I think that's a great, great advice. It made me think of sometimes how children are so scheduled that with so many activities, and it's important to just have downtime and relax time because some of the most beautiful learning and bonding can take place during that time and self-discovery. And I love what you're saying about be willing to kind of change traditions too, pa you know, passing on traditions, cooking together, or having someone bring something altogether different. And maybe it's always been the plan that Christmas is at my house. The kids have committed forever that they're coming to my house. That now there's some conversation that someone else, maybe they're getting a new house or they're doing something and they, they could kind of picture themselves hosting Christmas. And that might be more fun. It might be more relaxing and just understand that traditions can change and that we don't have to be victims to how we've always done things. I see a lot in housing where seniors will want to sell their home and then rent something or go into independent living, but they put a tremendous amount of pressure on themselves. We have to have a three bedroom because company might come. And a lot of places have two bedrooms and maybe they have a guest room that can be rented for a small fee or provided or let families stay in hotels. And that could be fun where everyone could get together for a swimming afternoon. And just think about it. It's not necessary that everyone stay in our personal homes and not put that much pressure on ourselves every day of the year because we might have company once or twice a year. And that's the reason, too, a lot of people hang on to their homes is, well, everybody's going to come here and everybody's going to, you know, stay in the guest room or stay in the basement. Well, maybe people might like to do some things different and um, we don't have to stick to that, that thought. Kelly. All right. In January, I know that statistics show that more people come to senior living to talk about making a transitional move than 
any other time of the year. What is it about holidays that causes that to happen? That's a good question. I think, um, I think a lot of folks uh, put a lot of emphasis on being together with family and doing things with family. And then the holidays are over and the family leaves and I'm alone. I'm, I, now what do I do? Um, we, I, I think loneliness is probably one of the biggest stressors at the holiday season and then the holidays are gone and so is all the happiness and the joy. But it doesn't have to be that way. Um, we encourage folks to find community. This is, this is I, how many, I, I'm gonna be brave and ask you, how many of you are here today and the holiday this year is a lot different than it was at the, of the holiday last year. Whether you've lost a spouse or you've moved, moved away, there's a lot of people that have change in their life, right? So loneliness is, a, is a, a thing that I think comes right after the holidays and that just the down, and there's a, I'm sure there's a, a chemical reaction that the doctor can talk about, uh, but I just see it in residents. And so we encourage folks to find community uh, whether that's just your neighbors, um, in our senior living community, we have cluster groups that get together in their neighborhoods regularly, and so there's that close bond, and uh, I think that helps folks mm -hmm. uh, when they're when they're getting over that that downtime uh, when all the family leaves. Okay, so we're going to piggyback with Brian, and then we'll come back to safety with GW, Brian. What causes during the holidays, what revelations, what is revealed during the holidays that causes family members to reach out for help? So we addressed a personal revelation that I might want community. Why do families sometimes panic after the holiday get-togethers? In my experience, what we've seen over the years is that families, to whatever extent they can, get together over the holidays. They make that a point, whether it be Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's however they, they pull everybody together, and they realize mom and dad may not be doing as well as we thought they were, or I've noticed that mom's slurring her words a little bit or not speaking quite as clearly as she used to be. Dad's not ambulating as well around the home and, and whatever else, or I saw him almost trip twice on that little throw rug. And so what we've noticed is a lot of families start to panic, and they're like, I don't know, because you're right, families all of a sudden disappear right after the holidays, and they know we're not going to be back for several months, maybe not until Easter. And so they start to worry about what's going to happen with their loved one over that time period. So in my industry, we get a lot of calls from families saying, hey, can you check on mom and dad? Can you talk to the doctor? Uh, or we noticed, you know, mom's blood sugar is way out of whack or whatever that may be. Um, and so that's been a big catalyst going into January as far as in home care, home health, hospice companies. It's a big influx, not just for the senior living communities, but also for those people that maybe want to stay at home, but they're not quite sure that it's safe to do so. Mm -hmm. All right. Speaking of safety, GW. And GW, feel free to walk around. I think that chair was a little too flimsy for our soldiers. So Yeah, that's not made for my bulk, actually. That's okay. 99% of the people in the world fit in that chair. So um, safety. So you got here today, right? And most of us came in in our own mode of conveyance because I watched you pull in the driveway, okay? One of the things that we always have to worry about is the hustle and bustle of the, of the holiday season. Also, bad people are out there watching you with your hustle and bustle, right? Mostly the bustle, right? They're watching you put your packages in the car. They're watching you get to and from the mall. They're watching you drive to the next place. They're watching you pull into your driveway, okay? So my message to you is, Put your packages in the trunk or put a blanket over them. Just don't make it easy. Don't leave your wallet on the front seat. These are all things I did last week, so I'm reminding you, right? <laughs> if you arm yourself, and many of us do, I noticed there was a come and take it mug, so I feel like that guy is probably armed when he goes out to, at night. We have to ensure that the, mo the safest place for that firearm is where? On our person. But... For many of us, it's not practical to carry it on our person. We may have it in a backpack or our purse or wherever it may be. We do not leave that in the car. 
please, if you can call any substation of Wichita PD, they'll tell you they probably have 20 or 30 calls a day about people having firearms stolen out of their vehicles. So where does that firearm go, right? It goes to Chicago. It goes to D.C. It goes to down on the border. It may be using crimes locally. I just don't think that I want to be responsible for uh, my firearm getting in the hands of a bad person that would do something bad to someone else. So now, what does that tell you? Secure, if you have to leave it in your car, there are ways to do that. Lock it in your glove box is not one of them because we can go to a junkyard today and I can get in that glove box within about five seconds if I'm motivated. And I I'm usually am, right after my morning coffee. <laughs> that blueberry is delicious, by the way. So we have options for you. Just come into the range and talk to my staff. They'll help you with that, okay? But I, not, I don't want to sell you a bunch of things. I want to tell you some things. Many of these things we don't even think about. Before you get to your car in the mall parking lot, just scan around you and see who's looking at you that probably shouldn't. Now, many of you are very lovely, okay? So I can imagine that you would be looked at everywhere you go. However, there are people out there watching you to do bad things. So, and you can, with, a, with meeting someone, a bad person's eye, eyes, you can turn that off many times because they're waiting on you to make a mistake or get into a position where they can take advantage of you. I'm not scaring you to death. Get out there in the Christmas shop and enjoy your friends and, and go to parties and, and invite your friends to, over to your house. The, th the last thing I'll leave you with is there's a thing underneath your car that everybody wants right now. That's your Cadillac converter. Is it called Cadillac? No, catalytic converter. Catalytic. So I'm, I'm just going to tell you how serious it is. Our van at the shop will never be a Cadillac because the converter was taken from it. The catalytic converter was stolen right out in the parking lot. At the Firearms the Academy. That's bold. Now, we do have some really nice photographs of that person, courtesy of our cameras. But... Um, it's a serious problem, so if you have a garage you can stow your car in in the evenings, please do that. It's a lot darker for a lot longer during this time of the season, so they have way more opportunity to come and, and uh, take advantage of your automobile sitting in your parking lot. The last thing we want to do is, you know, come out and try to start our car and not run as well as we'd like, especially in cold weather because that really matters. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any questions about any of these things I, I, I brought up today, just let me know, and um, I'll be more than happy to help you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a sad reality that we have to think that way, but I've been victims of both of those things. One, in Kansas City, not here, and I was very young. Uh, it was right after my son Brian was born, and I saw a guy that didn't look like he quite belonged at the apartment complex that I worked at, but I didn't want to be rude or unwelcoming or anything, so I did not make eye contact. In fact... I didn't pay any attention to him at all because I'm a very polite person. And then he walked across the parking lot. I didn't pay any attention. Again, I'm a very trusting person, and I'm not judgmental back then. And he snuck up behind me and grabbed me. And at first I thought it was a maintenance man just trying to be funny, but it wasn't really funny. And then I saw the big gun come up against my head, and my knees buckled because there had just been a story about a young bride being killed at like a Walmart parking lot. She was going in for some fabric or something. And so that was in my head, and that's what I was thinking of. And he got my purse and ran off. And so that was an interesting event in my life. So I've been a lot more observant, and I've scared my children to death, which Jillian can attest to, that I tell her that parking lots are very serious, and you have to pay attention and be observant because I've always been very alert since then on on parking lots and then the Ambrose team moving truck parked at the Ambrose team house somebody pulled in which also takes a lot of nerve uh, pulled in to our long driveway and stole the catalytic converter and my husband went out because the dog was barking and he's like you know didn't know what he'd ha what had happened really got a picture of the car going away not a good picture and sure enough, that was gone and very expensive to replace. So we just don't replace it. Now the truck runs a lot noisier than it used to. So the nerve and the, the amount of money that they can get for that isn't much compared to what it costs to replace. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Well, um, 
it's unfortunate that the bad actors in our society will tend to prey on those that have the most experience, that may seem a little bit slower, may seem a little bit weaker, but in my experience, you're more observant than anybody my age. You're more observant than anybody half my age because life experience tells you the more you see, the less trouble you get into, right? Mm -hmm. Sir. Right, our pepper ball? Okay, so. Okay, if you can repeat the question. So the gentleman wants me to talk about Burna. Now we have a product in our, uh, for our facility. We have two different products that are non-lethal products. Well, one is a pepper ball, okay? And it's, uh, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a little ball, looks like a marble. Please don't play marbles with them. Uh, when they make contact with someone you don't exactly want around you, they bust open in a, uh, a uh, OC type and uh, dust flies into their uh, eyes and uh, nasal passages and it deters them from doing bad things to you. And if it's to the point where you have to deploy that ball on them, give them a little extra, right? So we have those, uh, they look like a gun, but they're colored differently. We could teach you how to operate them. They're CO2 powered. They don't have any recoil, they're easy to load, and you're able to defend yourself with a non-lethal variant that will deter bad people from doing bad things, and you're able to, um, to uh, call the police to collect up that bad person because it leaves them marked. So they're marked. They take a black light and look at them and says, hey, you had some fun at this person's house, now you get to come with us. Okay, we have a quick follow-up question. So I think that's a great idea, um, but I know that one thing a lot of people are worried about when it comes to stuff like that is what if you... Um, whatever, throw it or whatever you have to do with it, but you have to worry about the stuff getting in your eyes or in your lungs, and then what you're trying to do is get them away from you, but you've been affected and maybe you can't, you know, function. Uh, that's an excellent question. I think you were a little confused with the product. The one product that you're talking about that mostly has cross-contamination value is a sprayed product, something you spray. Now, I do have those agents, but the product we're talking about looks and acts like a paintball gun, so I've shot targets out to about 50 yards with them, okay? So um, we all have to make a decision on what our, what our safety is. If the, the, the least ambulatory I am, the more safety cushion I want, right? Oh, yeah. If they use it close up, it's still going to stay within that body region. Now, if, you're, if it's a contact, they're on you and you use it, you're going to get a little bit. There's just nothing you can do about that. If you use it in your car, guess what? You're really going to get it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I <laughs> so uh, part of, man, that factor demonstration was so good. And then we also have, if you're, if you're worried about the cross-contamination of OC or tear gas or anything like that, we have the Taser device from Taser. So we have both. We have both kinds. One looks like a flashlight that gives a little body extra jolt if they have to be, if you have to ask them not to be around you. And then we also have the ones that shoot the probes out where you can give them a little ride. It's, it's a lot of fun. Great stocking stuff for ideas and training available at right. Rainier. And it's a beautiful facility. So I saw the doctor get a little nervous with the big get, beginning of the gun discussion. No, you weren't? Okay. Okay, go ahead. I climb 14ers in Colorado alone. My mom doesn't like this, but I do. And I've been thinking I need a gun because I don't want a bear or somebody else. But I'm like, how does this work on bears? <laughs> that was my thought. Well, there is bear spray. Um, this, this, that, those uh, burn -a systems will, will deter a bear. You have to give them a little bit, okay? But um, the, the cool part is you have a magazine full of 10 rounds. So. Yeah. Well, we have a cousin that almost got taken by a cougar. So, yeah, gun safety that might be good. That wasn't at the candle but, club, was it? Yeah, you know, we want to get back to the health safety also. Okay. Oh, you have a mic. I'm I sorry. I'm so used oh. to playing with one microphone. Is it on? Yep. Okay. You're okay. good. So, GW, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, but I was at uh, Rainier Arms Firearms Academy doing a segment for Ageless Enthusiasm, and it is on a week from tonight, December 15th at 8 o'clock on Channel 8. And we talked with your director of training about some of these non-lethal devices. 
if you're not ready to commit to carrying a weapon. So I will kind of give you an overview of what the um, academy is like. I also speak with Joe Shalacy of a &E's First 48, who is going to echo the same things that GW said about making sure you make eye contact with someone who is in your space, because that tells them that you can identify them and they want to have that element of surprise. So that's great advice. Also, I speak with Anita Herrera, who decided after um, a change in her life that she needed to be able to protect and defend herself. And she's part of a, com a, a little group of ladies there called Lead Angels. And it's a great little collective of like-minded women that are all doing fun things together at the firearms. And lastly, I speak with Lance Powers of Operatus. And he is a, um, he's just a kind of a cool guy who specializes in safety. And he's going to talk about some of those same non-lethal devices. So. If you want to see this beautiful academy, I didn't realize it was that gorgeous on the inside. Um, very helpful people. I spoke with your um, young lady at the front desk. Forget her name. But anyway, she was wonderful to me. Uh, they're very welcoming. Please tune in a week from tonight at 8 o'clock and watch that safety show. And we are right in um, Rainier Arms Firearms Academy. Thank you. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, Lance Powers, is, they're going to teach a class in our facility about non-lethal elements. So if you wanted to know more about pepper spray and taser and things like mm -hmm. that, that class is available to you. It should be on the Operatus website. So my, my thoughts are, I just wish everybody would be nice. But <laughs> and, and so we realize not everybody might be interested in this, but we hope we're providing you a little entertainment. And if you are interested, I, I was joking about stocking stuffers, but actually, you know, some things for family members or for yourself that could be something to check out. And a word from one of our attorneys, Alex Robinson with Moore Slang. So before I did this, as many of you know, I was a police officer with the Riley County Police Department. And before that, I was in the Army. So I've been OC sprayed. I've been pepper sprayed. Just about any type of spray you want to talk about, I've had it. And I will tell you this, I would rather be tased every day for the rest of my life than to ever experience OC spray again. So to answer your question, if you need to use it, use it. You will get it and it will suck. <laughs> and you will not be happy and neither will they. And you will be alive because nothing gets the cops there faster than two people on the ground writhing in pain and screaming <laughs> at the top of their lungs, okay? So don't be afraid to use it if you need to use it. Uh, and then just real quick, we're talking about safety with, with other people around. There's things that are called pre-assault indicators. I don't know why this is, but about 70% of the time in, in a situation where someone's going to rob from you or steal from you, they're going to ask you, do you know what time it is or do you have a cigarette I can use? I have no idea why that is, but, but they want to have some type of contact with you beforehand. Now, there's, there's definitely times where someone sucker punches you or runs up and takes your purse. But almost all the time, I don't, I don't know what, what the tick is that makes everyone do this, but they always want to come up and have some type of little interaction with you before they do it. So if you're aware of those things, you can say, stop, I know what you're about to do, and it breaks that cycle that they're in, and they're going to say, you know what, I don't want to mess with this person, and they'll take off. Because I think we can, we can get some backup over there, but most of the time these people are cowards. So the second you show them a spine, they're going to they're gonna say, there's easier targets out there. I'm going to take off. They're, they're going to live to steal another day. That sounds like a great segue for a physical activity. If everyone would please stand. Let's just stand and stretch a second. And then on the count of three, we're going to play that role and say, stop. Any other tips on how to do that? Is that good enough? We'll try that. All right, count of three. Ready? We're well, going to put your hand out and say stop. stop, stop. Get, put your own personality into it, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Stop. stop. All right, so GW gave a real serious stop. Let's try a real mean 
serious stop. Ready? One, two, three. Stop. All right, GW likes that better. All right, very good, have a seat. All right, are you feeling warmed up now? Let's hear some questions from you guys. We have a doctor up here, all kinds of health experts, soldier safety expert, let's ask some questions. All right. I'll just keep, I'll just cord the mic and keep it going then. All right, as we've been talking, what are some of your thoughts on health? What about fitness and massages? <sighs> They're my favorite. Guys, I get a weekly massage. That's how important I think massages are. It's not because I have two 14-year-old kids at home. It's not because I have money coming out my ears. It's because they're that important. It, relaxing, taking care of you. Again, it's more important than you can think about. Um, exercise is important. Understand that these stressors in your body, physically, your human body only knows one way to respond to stress. And it's the way we developed 10,000 years ago. And there were not holiday parties, or the perfect gift, or clean living rooms, or the perfect pie, or family arguments, or bills, or any of those things going on 10,000 years ago. What was going on 10,000 years ago was there was a saber-toothed tiger chasing you, wanting to eat you, and you were going to die. Your body responds to all of these stressors in that way because it's all it knows what to do. Physical activity is a way to burn off some of that response, to get some of that response off of your body so that you're not under that stress response all the time. Yes, massage is another way. <laughs> okay, so why is, so I'm going to ask you two questions. Massage, what physically is good about massage? Number two, um, when you're feeling blue, you're feeling stressed, realizing that that's what's going on, I need to take care of myself as a human being, and maybe you leave the house and go do something, or you go out for a walk. Why does that help? Okay, so a couple of things. One, massage actually is a physical way of turning on your rest and digest nervous system. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system. The stress response is a sympathetic nervous system. Any deep breathing, which is why grandma always said, take a deep breath and calm down. Deep breathing actually lowers your, oh, I'm gonna shoot that coffee out. Yeah, that's great. Um, it lowers your diaphragm, and there is a nerve that runs on your esophagus through the diaphragm. It's the vagus nerve, and it's a big parasympathetic rest and digest nerve that runs down. When you take a deep breath, you flatten that diaphragm out, and you literally give a physical stimulation to turn on rest and digest. When you turn that on, automatically you, have, you can't ride the brake and the gas together in your body. Automatically the stress response goes down just by turning on that parasympathetic response. So massage, one, you just calm down. You lay there and you rest, and that turns on that sympathetic. But two, any deep breathing will also do that. So that's why yoga and meditation are so important. On to your next, which is when you get this awareness that you're blue, a lot of this comes from an awareness practice, right? When you are in your younger years and your 30s, and I don't know, I'm in my late 40s right now, and I don't know, it doesn't feel so young some days, but understand that you are constant go, 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 go. There is like this compartmentalization that we talk about, and we put away all of the feelings that we're having. Meditation or getting a way to be aware of those is the first thing that you need to be able to do in order to deal with them in an effective way. So when we talk about deep breathing and massage and meditation and these active things that you can do to relax, part of that is becoming aware of why you're needing to relax. So when you feel these sad things, that is always the first step. One is awareness. And then I always encourage people to ask yourself, do I want to feel this way? Sometimes I want to be sad, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to be sad if I don't want to. For me, it's more anger. Do I really want to be angry about this petty little thing? That's where awareness comes up, and then I make that decision. And then doing these exercise or these things. So exercise, again, you're getting the deep breathing, right? You're stimulating part of that parasympathetic. With the exercise, you're stimulating the other side, but you are getting some relaxation. You're also releasing certain endorphins, so chemicals that cause you to feel good. They literally, I mean, they bind with the same receptor in your brain that 
heroin and morphine bind with, they make you feel better. So that's part of the reason. And then of course, again, you're giving an outlet to do what those stress hormones want to do. They wanna drive your blood pressure up, they wanna drive your heart rate up. Doing that with exercise is normal. Having that happen without exercise is not normal and makes us sick. Yeah, and when you exercise, you usually feel so much better than you did before you exercised because of just what it does for you. Yeah. So taking that time out to do that is really It's something. good for the heart, it's good for the lungs, but it's great for the soul. Yes. So there's a wonderful book called Breathe. And one of the things that talks about in that, that book is that especially older generations maybe um, are in a habit of shallow breathing and then has, has seniors age and they need to use an inhaler maybe for the first time. It's very difficult to learn in that um, I think that book, Breathe, would be a wonderful Christmas gift for yourself and for people on your list. It's really a relaxing book. It's interesting. It's kind of fun to read. And you find yourself breathing better just reading about breathing. And can you demonstrate kind of what, you know, what breathe, a good breath that's not shallow and how to take a deep breath? Anybody? Oh, God, they're all looking at me. Okay, so you should breathe. If you think of, like, a bladder bag, like, they used to make wine in these bags. They, they were, like, stomach. They were, like, cow stomach or something. Anyway, you'd make wine. When you think about that, the bottom fills up first before it expands the top part. That's how your breathing should happen. You should really be pushing that diaphragm up before you're getting this expansion of your chest cavity, does, if that makes sense. So... Your belly should punch out. For all those ladies we all been holding in our bellies, stop doing that. Don't do that. Let that fall out and you expand there before you expand that chest cavity. So, And so sometimes we're just kind of holding our breath a little bit and we need Most to... Most of us only breathe into here. You need to get all of that going. Yeah. And so doing just some nice deep breathe, breathing can really help or catching yourself doing the shallow breaths. So, okay. Um, independent living. What are some of the learning opportunities and fun activities that people might enjoy in independent living? Like at KMH, they do something called horse races. And I don't know, I didn't know what it was. I haven't observed it yet. But they were all lined up for it and excited about it. And I mentioned it to my husband. He goes, oh, that's probably that off-track betting. I said, I kind of doubt that's what it is. <laughs> Even though I do know a lot of the communities will load people up that want to go to the casino and things like that, but I'm like, I don't think that's what it is. And it's some fun game, and they love doing it. But what are some of the things that, that you guys have done or heard about? And I know, Brian, you've done a lot of activities in, in communities. I think there's a variety of different types of communities that offer. I mean, um, you just whispered bingo to me. And yes, of course, we have some bingo. But um, I think what, what we focus on for the most part, is helping people participate in things that bring them joy, um, uh, kind of trim off some of the things that take your energy on a daily basis. If you're at the point where you're really, you're doing fine, but all your energy is sucked up by just living, just your day-to-day -day activities, you don't have any of that time or energy left for the things that you enjoy. So. Um, Learning new skills. I mean, we have resident who learned the, to play the fiddle a couple of years ago. Um, our both of our communities are right next to college campuses, so there's, um, you know, various generations. One has a childcare center on it, and so um, intergenerational activities are a big focus of what. Blue Sam Communities offers, at least, and I know a lot of independent living communities um, can either uh, kind of fulfill that need for um, community by giving you things, those trips and mm -hmm. activities to participate there, or independent living can just trim off some of those worries and stressors that you have with home ownership and maintenance and all of those things to just allow you to do what you've always wanted to do and never quite been able to. That's a good point, that the challenge of home ownership becomes more and more as you age, and you've already invested in the real estate market, and sometimes cashing out and reinvesting that cash to fund your lifestyle is a good idea, because when you just write a rent check or you 
you can go into senior living, you, you don't have to worry about so many things, the insurance and claims and vendors and plumbers and all that stuff. Is it not frustrating hiring anybody to come to your house to do something? You know, and they give you, they give you a bid. Maybe they don't give you a bid. You never get the bid. Or they give you a bid and you never hear from them again. Or they show up one day to do some work and they don't come back. It's really stressful. And um, so even just going to 55 plus or 62 plus senior living where you just write a check can create a lot of freedom. So independent living, you, you have a certain number of activities, jam-packed activities you're doing every month. But you can also find activities in fitness centers, senior service centers, and, and lots of other places as we, well. We do on our campuses have wellness centers with pools and all kinds of equipment, classes, yoga, you name it. There's all kinds of activities there. But uh, when Bethany was talking about um, getting rid of the home ownership and coming into a community with independent living, uh, who takes care of the maintenance, it frees you up to do the things you really want to do. And we encourage people to do that. Volunteerism is probably one of the biggest things on our campus that we see uh, with independent living residents. And it's not, a, it's not an activity that's generated to have 50 people come. It's, there's 50 opportunities for people to do different things that they really, really enjoy doing. Uh, the child care that is on our campus, the intergenerational activities, uh, that we have seniors actually participating with children's activities. It's wonderful. We have an arboretum uh, on the Heston campus, and it, it's, it's not as big as the Botanica, and this is absolutely beautiful, but we just finished Arboretum Lights, and all of our independent living staff uh, drove golf carts and took healthcare, assisted living, and independent living residents through the Arboretum to see the lights uh, because sometimes walking is a little difficult when you think about being out in the cold that long and going around and seeing things. So we took people around to do that. There's all kinds of things really that you can do, but probably the biggest um, advice I would have is just find your community. Uh, if, it's, if it's your neighbors or a sister or just some friends that you had, uh, this reminds me, Bethany just um, got some residents on her campus who used to go to college together, and then they went their separate ways. They got married. They had their families, and now they've come to live at Lakeside Inclusive, and they looked at each other and said, we, went, we, went, we know you. We went to college. So the joke now has been it's like a dorm again all over for these ladies and it's kind of fun to watch them find new activities at this yeah. age so i'm a little nervous about the trouble they might get into but because they're kind of ornery okay greg dane if you have a quick comment that'd be great we're going to hear something from alex and then we're going to hear a granddaughter's perspective thank you Catherine. i just want to share real quick and a doctor i think the doctor today would agree with this uh, I spent about 20 years in the medical field. Doctors today um, have to, they're forced to practice sick care versus health care because of depression, stress. If you talk to a physician, about 70 to 90 percent of the office visits for primary care can be taken back to stress or depression or something that's affecting you emotionally. And we've heard this comment made today is get up and move. Y'all heard me share that last month about the Japanese culture. I'll share an anonymous quote with you that if you think about this, when I share it with you, it's got a lot of, a lot of meat in it. The best things in life make you sweaty. Think about that for a second. You can go all kinds of directions with it, but, but get, up, get up and move every 20 to 25 minutes. That's what the folks in the blue zones do. Their bodies are constantly moving. They're not ultra marathoners. They're not swimmers. They're not weightlifters. They're up and they're moving. Isolation kills and loneliness kills. And if you look at traffic in the emergency rooms, the doctor can back me up on this as well. Majority of the visits take place on Sundays and Mondays because people are stressing out about the week ahead. Get up and move. I think that's probably one of the most important things is that when we get to the point where we just want to sit all the time, we see this a lot with our clients, that's not good. So we're all trying to avoid the no-go and the slow-go years as much as possible, and you do that by moving. And they say that sitting is the new smoking. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I think that's pretty good. Alex, come on up and let's address depression again, because I think that's one of the most important things to be aware of. We have to be self-aware, and when we notice that we're not happy or we're really um, struggling with something, to look inside and say, what can I do to process this better? And maybe, you know, yes, appreciating where we should be sad, but not wallowing in it. Because I don't know about you guys, but um, there are families that there's estrangements and arguments and people that are just, you're never going to understand. And why try to figure out people that you can't figure out? And just be okay with that. A mentor I had years ago, he said that stay out of judgment and stay in curiosity. Rather than saying, you know, thinking about, I want to talk sense into them, just go, oh, well, that's what they think. Well, that's interesting. And leave it at that. You don't have to understand everyone. And not everyone maybe is capable of understanding things on the same level that you can. And, and there are just hurtful things that we have to figure out how to deal with. And I think that's part of our journey on, on Earth, is to deal with things the best we can. Yeah, I think around the holiday season, probably a week or two before Thanksgiving, through the, through the New Year, when I was a police officer, we get calls three to five to ten times as often for mental health checks, for people who are calling in about wanting to commit suicide, for people who don't think they can go any longer. And I think there's a, a, it's a combo of reasons. One is, this is supposed to be a time of fun and friends and family. And if you don't have fun and friends and family in your holiday season, it's, it's a double bummer. You know, maybe for the, for the whole year, you're like, well, this is just kind of my life, and I understand it's lonely, and, and that's fine. But this time of year, you, you, you're like, dang, I don't have the people in my life I used to have. Or my kids are at someone else's house, and they chose not to be with me, and that's really, you know, making me sad. Whatever it is, there's all these different reasons for it. But one of the things I found in common every single time I did a check, because I, I was taught to do this, and, I, I, and it's it, it stuck in my mind, I would ask them when I showed up and we've talked and I'd get them the help they need, have you talked to any of your family about this? Every single time the answer was no. Every suicide, every completed suicide and every attempted suicide that I've worked on, every family member has said, I had no idea that they were feeling this way. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take anything else away from today, and this is the, the brutal honesty that we talk about sometimes, Take away this. If you are feeling depressed, and the stats are we've got, I don't know, probably about 100 people in here, 25 people are going to experience depression this holiday season. So that means, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of us in this room that are going to feel that way. Reach out to your people. They don't have to be family. They, they can be friends. They can be your doctor. They can be, you know, one of us on the panel here today. Whoever it is, reach out and let them know, hey, I'm really struggling and I need some help. Just doing that alone is going to make a huge difference in your life mm -hmm. because so, people are living their own lives. You know, if my parents reached out to me today and said that, I talked to them last two or three weeks ago because life gets busy. I got, I got young kids and, the, you know, I plan on calling them at a certain time and then the kids need something and I, I space it and I, I haven't talked to them for a month when I, when I look up next. If they called me and said that, you better believe I'm going to drop everything and, and try to get them the help they need and, and you know, recommit to helping them. Mm -hmm. But I can't help them if I don't know. And it's the same with the people in your life. If you're in here today and this has struck a nerve or, or you've been listening to this and you're like, man, I, I really need to make some changes, reach out and make those changes because your life will be better for it. Very good. Well, and I was just thinking, too, that Sometimes the reason why we're sad or stressed is because we're so in our own head and in our own feelings and we're thinking about ourselves. That's why volunteering is so great. Uh, but doing things for other people and realizing that other people around you and family members are dealing with their own stresses and to think about them because usually when there's a suicide, you are completely caught by surprise and that we have to be really sensitive of the other people in our lives and making sure that they're okay and not, have, not playing that victim role. Take, take your fingers like a V and put a V over your forehead and think about the times when you've played the victim, like poor me, 
They don't call me. They don't invite me. They don't blah, blah, blah. You know, why doesn't somebody, you know, think to send me that or, or whatever? And think about that and take that victim sign off your forehead and see what you can do to, to, be, to be a little more empowering for yourself and for others. So, all right, Jillian, we're going to hear from a 20-something. Thank you for not putting that last number on there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. So um, I'd like to hear yeah. what you think people in your generation would want their grandparents and people to know about holidays. Yeah, so this one, I, it's kind of kind of touch on, on what was just said, but we just want you to have fun. You know, holiday season can be super stressful, and you want to, you know, have all of your recipes put together and make sure that everything is just as perfect as possible, but that's not what makes the holidays fun. Um, heck, you can order in food, and I guarantee you'll have just as much fun as you would because it's not about the preparation and being nervous and having all that anxiety to get a party thrown together. It's more about just spending time with the people that you love and that love you. Um, when my grandma calls me, uh, so for Thanksgiving, my dad and I went over there and we were deboning a turkey and it is not glamorous work. It was very messy and I kept dropping stuff and my grandma was just laughing like crazy. And that was what was so fun. And you know what, the meal came together might not have been the best turkey with my help. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, just seeing her let loose and kind of throw the rules of past holidays out the window and decide just to have fun and goof around with me, that's what I'm going to remember forever. And uh, call, call your grandkids because we, we like to come over. We Sometimes life is crazy and we don't think about like, like what you just said, we don't think about making the call when we should. We've got other things going on. And so when you call us, it puts a smile on our face, and we want to hang out. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So make some dates. Yeah. Come out to some shows. My grandma Barbara over there, she comes to all of my rock and roll shows, and she's out there dancing all night long. And it is so much fun. We want you to get out and make some friends, go to a fitness class, go to bingo. I don't know. Just make some friends. And we just want you to have fun and be happy. Are you going to sing December 23rd? Do you know? I am, yes. Candle Club? I will be singing at Candle Club December 23rd. Barb's going to be there. My mom's <laughs> going to be there. Uh, so come on out and have fun. We'll start singing about 830. Candle Club is a really great place to think about joining. It's really inexpensive. I want to say maybe 40 a month. And for that, you get lots of music all the time. Who belongs to Candle Club? GW does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Candle Club <laughs> super fun. What do you do on Monday nights? We play trivia, and it's fun trivia, and there's no backstabbing. There's n it's just a bunch of old folks having a blast. It's a lot of fun. I recommend you come. We, we go it from 6 to 7 o'clock, and after that we have dinner. We have drinks before if anyone wants. It's fun. I really recommend the Candle Club for good fun for everybody. Yeah, so, so it's a great place. They've got live music all the time. And you, you're a little tainted on Monday night because Tuesday night, she likes Monday because Tuesday also has trivia, but they play Serious. serious. So Mike and Suzanne are like, we're out on Tuesdays. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Kim, and I, uh, my husband and I just recently found out about in Bel Air, in at their um, at the community room, they have twice a week line dancing for free, and you learn to do all the dances. So it's all a bunch of seniors. And we're out there learning these line dances, and not only are we getting the exercise, but our brains are, are working to, to remember these things, and it's a real important part. So um, I just thought I'd pass it along. It's a, it's a real fun thing to do. It doesn't cost anything, and you get exercise. Okay. Um, so just even, even re trying to remember the things you want to do and leaving the house, that helps stimulate your brain, and that's just helpful. And what was your question? Oh, the, the racetrack game. I still don't know what it is, but I think that they have, they've said they have horses on a stick. Do you, Brian, do you know what it is? 
and it goes on, you know, it's like horses on a stick, and they roll the dice, and then the horses go, and then they win KMH bucks to get their hair cut and other things, so I don't know. I better observe it before it's over. Sounds like a game that they ought to make. And I know you, in the past, you've dressed up whole entire teams and shown up to entertain. And what do you, what, what do you see when people participate in, in activities like that? We see smiles. Um, and more so, we, it gets people out of their social isolation. If you are feeling a little bit down or you don't quite have all the family, everybody here today has talked about community and reaching out. And we've got a great community right here. I'm certain there's tons of people in this room that are going off and doing things that they'd love to bring you along. Um, but anything from like an exercise drum ball activity to um, the dress ups or we did one a couple years back where I dressed up as reindeer and gave everybody Nerf guns and let them shoot at us or you know, cotton snowballs and they could throw snowballs at us and it was, it was just a blast. And uh, those smiles and, and that activity, it uplifts your spirits, it gets your brain back into a healthy space and um, maybe a little bit of uh, sweat, too. Just depends. And playing games like that with your family could be really fun. Okay, so we're going to start wrapping it up. So think about your questions or ahas, because it will help other people. We're passing around surveys. We'd really like your feedback, what you learned today, what you liked, what you want us to talk about next year. And Barbara and Doug, man, they have more fun than anybody I know. So live in their best life. So here you go, Barb. Uh, I think dancing is one of the best things that you can do. And Doug and I go to venue 3130 on Monday nights, uh, and we're learning uh, the West Coast Swing and East Coast Swing, and uh, we've done the rumba. And it's very inexpensive. It's like $5 for a two-hour class. Or you can pay $20 and go for like three months on Monday nights. And they also have dances on Sunday nights. And, um, and sometimes they have a DJ and sometimes they have a live band. The Boomers, which is an older group, but they're a lot of fun. They play all the 60s and 70s music. And um, what is the other? Uh, the Benders. The Benders also play the good old rock and roll. I'm telling you that uh, as far as stress relief, that's one of the best things you can do. And I've been dancing for maybe eight or nine years, and I've been told that uh, dancing is good like for the mind and the body, and it helps the brain, and um, it's a great stress reliever because you can't think too much about what's worrying you when you're dancing. <laughs> so, and you don't have to have a partner. Uh, there are plenty of guys there, uh, or women, and uh, so it's uh, everyone rotates, and it's a good time. So, very cool. Awesome. And Doug, you belong to the Corvette Club, one of the Corvette Clubs, or at least one, and you, they do activities all the time. So look for clubs and things, and share the things that you guys like to do. I know, Hank, you're real involved with pickleball. Now, did that start because you heard about pickleball from us, or you just found out about it on your own? From the senior centers. And so you've become like a top, top player. What's your rating? I have had health issues, so I haven't been rated yet. <laughs> so that's probably a good thing. People can be serious about that, right? Right, but when I started playing, senior centers were the only place in town to play. No, nobody else had courts. And so it's just evolved from there, and it's, now it's all over. So chicken and pickle is pretty fun. <clears throat> so I've been playing at chicken and pickle with Mindy and our friend Terry from the station, and that's really spoiled us because there you can treat yourself to chicken strips and other things there, and uh, it's pretty fun. And uh, I think that pickleball is a really fun sport. And that could be a great place to take your grandkids or family to during the holidays. And some of the things you do need to reserve early, so just be aware of that. Okay, um, let's go to the next slide if somebody can push it. And make, put your um, game cards up in the air. We're going to collect those. Who could collect those for me in a basket? And we'll do that drawing. All right, what's a good aha or suggestion or question? Anybody? Have an aha. What did you learn today? What did you hear that might be helpful? Be aware of your surroundings. Okay. What else? 
Be careful when you're walking. Walk like a penguin. All right. What else did you pick up today? <laughs> Carl, anything? Exercise, very important. Exercise is very important. Okay, very good. Anything else? All right. We are going to take a photo of the panel as soon as we close. We'll take a photo first. After we get a photo of the panel, then you're welcome to grab them and um, ask questions. Also, please make use of these amazing professionals in the room. Go out and go up to them and ask questions. Get the educational material they brought for you. And um, we take January off. We're doing that for the second time, taking January off. We're going to restart. Same time, same place. Second Thursday of every month, 10 a.m. to 11.30. And we're, I think we're adding fun things all the time, and it's just evolving. So I hope you'll join us as we kick off our fifth season uh, in February. In this seminar series, don't forget, has um, inspired the television show Empowering Seniors, which we are in the middle of taping our third season right now. And that show airs Friday night, Channel 8, at... 8 p.m. or 8.30, I I'm not thinking. And then it plays three other times through the week on three of the channels. PBS has four channels total. And the surveys just leave on your table when you're done. And we really wish you the merriest Christmas ever. And does anyone have a last word? Let's just hear, have a last word from each of you that have something to add. We can come back to you. Who's ready to give their last word? Brian? I think the last word is enjoy the holiday season. Get outside when you can when the weather's nice. Go enjoy illuminations, uh, anything that you can possibly do. Move, but be safe and be happy. I wish every one of you a very Merry Christmas. We don't say that enough to one another, so Merry Christmas. Hug somebody you don't know, but get their permission first, okay? And make their day better, okay? I was just going to say hug somebody, but uh, my coworker wanted to give me a hug, and she gave me a hug, and then she said, oh, sorry, I think I'm supposed to ask first. But <laughs> yes, ask them first. But, um, yes, if you want a great place to come and eat, come to Heston. Um, Heston has a wonderful restaurant called The Water's Edge. We have cards over there. Um, get away and do something different. Get out of your comfort zone and try something different. Try to schedule some time for those quality conversations with your loved ones, especially the ones that are going to be part of your care team as your needs change. Now is the time to start talking about what's important to you, what you want things to look like. Um, and there's a tool, there's one of the free tools that we suggest is called the Conversation Project. It's online. If you go there, there's a guide that can walk you through how to start having that conversation with your loved ones, the conversation project. So check it out and, and start talking. Experiences truly make the best gifts. So have fun experiences with your family members this holiday and your friends and make some new memories that you will hold on to for years and years to come. Well, lastly, I want to say thank you to all of you. This is really what I'm coming away from this with. You guys make some, what we see in the healthcare industry as uncomfortable and unpleasant. You guys make it look good. Remember, you're all examples out there, and thank you for being amazing examples. My challenge to you is to continue to be an example of how amazing life can be throughout all the stages of it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. And GW you thought of something. Okay, so this group not only helps people of your age group, it's helped me. Uh, when I was here in, um, when was it, 2020? Gosh, it's been that long, or 2021. Everyone had masks on, so I recognize everyone's eyes. But I met someone here that changed my life forever. And I'm uh, eternally grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I just love that, that you met your love at our seminar. So that's really cool. See, you never know what Empowered Senior can do for you. <laughs>
And did you have something to add? Okay.